Okay, well, I'm leading back again as promised, and this time we're going to do a deep dive into the Airstep Spark Light foot switch. And this is a foot switch that you can purchase in order to control the Spark 40. Uh, now, just a, a little aside to this, they do make a uh, positive grid, they do make a foot switch that is designed to work with the Spark 40. Um, but after going online, I read through some forums and some user testimonials. Apparently, their own version of the foot switch uh, has a lot of issues. So I thought, mm, okay, uh, do I want to deal with that? And then I read about the alternative, which is the Airstep Spark, because I wanted to have a foot switch. Because uh, with in the, as is the case with most digital modeling amps, there's a lot of other functionality that you get when you use the foot controller. And if you don't have that, then you don't have access to it. It's you know it's sort of the same same thing with the app. There's a lot more you can get and do with the app as opposed to without it. So it's also the same with the foot controller. Uh, so, not to bash Spark's own foot controller, but uh, I just figured, hey man, you know, if I'm going to spend the money, then let me get something where the people are like, yeah, this really works, it works well. So, um, I may eventually get the Spark foot controller myself just to cross check, just to cross test and see what the differences are and see if I can actually pinpoint those issues that a lot of people mentioned. I'm not going to go into it right now. Uh, for the sake of time. Anyway, so cool thing about the foot controller is it has three modes. Uh, we're going to buy bypass the first mode because uh, the, the first mode, at least for me, isn't really useful. The first mode is so one, two, three, four. One through four, it basically just turns the, the drive on and off. So if you have a preset in there where you're using overdrive or distortion, it turns it on and off. You know, I, I don't really have a use for that. Um, it you, you can program it to pull up different presets. So you get four different presets. So you can have clean amp, you can have crunch, you can have high gain, you can have metal, whatever. Um, what I found really cool is mode two and mode three. And I'll show you that. All right, so first we're going to go into mode two. So the first thing you do, you want to make sure, you know, let me turn this around so you can see it. So you have function switch, power on off, um, AC, so that's 5 to 9 volt, and the wireless uh, antenna. You don't necessarily need that, but I just left it on, you know, why bother taking it off? So first thing you want to do is you want to charge it. Um, I recommend charging it for 30 minutes to a half hour. Do not, and I repeat, do not use it. Uh, connected directly to the AC the whole time because it will damage the battery and it will damage the device. So you just need to charge it for maybe a half hour um, to an hour and you're good to go. And it, it should last, according to the specs, it should last 300 hours of play time. Um, who's actually going to sit there and play 300 hours? Who knows? Anyway, uh, so here's how you get to the different modes. So mode two, mode three, and also mode four. Mode four, I didn't really see a need for it because the only difference between like mode three and mode four is it brings the, the reverb in and out. But I'll dem demonstrate that anyway. So in order to get to the specific modes, you hold down said button as you flip on the power switch. And as soon as you see that green light, And the blue light you should be in now sometimes it takes a little practice sometimes it takes a little while so I release it and then okay let's see what we get if it's working correctly then we should get okay so 
high gain setting I had. I don't really remember what I set. Okay, that's a high gain mode with uh, flange. So that's flange, delay, and then number four. Oh, that's right. Uh, number four goes to another preset. Basically, what number number four does in mode two is it's a step up. So you see different amp models. And I didn't set these because I, I basically didn't even bother with mode two. I, I went directly to mode three, mode four. Because I just felt for what I wanted to do, that was the most useful. But as you see, you can get a whole lot of different sounds. So what it's basically doing is you're getting your delay. So that's just flat. Uh, you know, that's basically flat with no, uh, no reverb. And in this case, reverb, it would be global. So then if I bring it in, it'll just stay on. So then you have like, say your rhythm setting. So you're, you know, you're doing your. take it out if you don't want it and then you bring in your modulation And then the fourth button, once again, changes the amp setting. So, pretty interesting. So that's mode two. Like I said, I basically don't use this. I, I went straight to mode three and mode four. Uh, and my favorite is mode three because I find that to be the most useful. So then you want to change, you turn it off. Very simple. Just turn it off. Then, um, having worked in IT for 13 years, we use the basic, you know, 101, 10 seconds. So you just wait 10 seconds, then you turn the device on again. So here we go. So this time we're going to go for mode three. So. I hold down the third button, flip the power switch, wait a couple of seconds, and then click, and that should be it. Once you see the green, that pretty much means it's functioning. And you're in mode three. So, once again, you've got your game, your modulation. chorus because for me I like to keep the same tone but I want to be able to bring in the effects and so what this does is it it frees you up to not have to use you know pedals external pedals or whatnot 
Yeah. But I never use a whole bunch of effects anyway, in spite of the fact that you've seen my pedal board demo. But yeah, I'm basically, you know, reverb, delay, chorus, occasional flange guy. I don't really use phasers. <laughs> So then, your next is your delay. All right. And then back to your basic tone, you know. And if my memory serves me correctly, I think now we can step up and step down. Step down. I think on uh, mode two, you can only go up, but in mode three, you can go down. Let's turn the layoff. Okay, we're only stepping. This looks like, yeah, looks like we're only stepping up. So that's kind of similar to mode two, in a way. So what happens? It's almost like a boost. It's doing something, but I'm not sure what it's doing. It actually wasn't doing that before when I was, uh, you know, <coughs> demoing it before I demoed it. You know, because I, I ran through the parameters just to see, okay, let's see what it does. So I want to actually do the demo. And now it's doing something else. That's that's actually pretty interesting. So in any event, so you can go through. You get all kinds of possibilities. So once again, just turn it off. Very simple. Just turn it off. So wait about 10 seconds. And also I'll just look at the timer as, <clears throat> as the video runs. Okay, so that's good enough. That's 10 seconds. So now we're going to go to mode four. So press the fourth button and on. Okay. And let's see what this does. Okay, this is interesting. Now it seems to be changing the, uh, the modulation somewhat. That's very interesting. Uh, 
it just seems like we're in a chorus mode. All right, I'm going to try that again. Because like I said, sometimes you have to tweak. Yeah, you got to tweak it. It gets a little, you know, gets a little fiddly, as the Brits would say. So may may take a little bit of experimentation. But once you get it down, it's actually really cool. So again, so we will go to mode four. Okay, and now we got the green light. I'm gonna wait a little longer this time around. So about 10 seconds or so, and then I'll release it. Okay. <laughs> setting and it just saved the last uh, preset and doesn't change it okay well fair enough I can still experiment with that so anyway come out of that now I guess I'm just gonna go into mode one so you can just see see what that is uh, for the sake of the demonstration all right so first button power switch and there we go is the good old-fashioned old-school switching between your various settings so this is kind of a metal hard rock tone I got some delay on it Go over here and this is a kind of a grindy filter in there. I don't remember what settings I use. This is this is like super heavy with uh, delay on it. This would be, be great for, for thrash, you know, like some of the some of the old thrash stuff I used to do. Preset. And this is basically just straight clean. Now in mode one, then it acts like a boost, really. Now it really is a boost. You can hear the difference. not bad so you know obviously if you're doing a solo and you want to punch through um, you know so your solo gets heard you know while the rhythm section is going that's actually very handy and uh, like I said uh, in this when it's in this mode then it's global reverb so no reverb and then you bring it back and it comes in as much as you dial it in. I mean, okay, let's let's max it, and you can see how much reverb you get. I'm using a, a kind of a subtle plate because that's what I prefer for doing rhythm. So you kind of get it get an ambience from like a almost like a garage vibe. Early 
80s wave type stuff because uh, they used a lot of reverb. <laughs> So that's the air step. Okay. Oh yeah, I just turned my volume down. I, I you know I like to crank it a little more, but obviously playing in a in an apartment, you know, I try to give the neighbors a break. I just tr try to keep the volume, you know, nominal. <laughs> nominal. You know, within reason, so, so it's not too disturbing. But at the same time, so you guys can hear what the thing is doing. lends itself very well to um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that delay out and I'm going to bring the reverb back in gave you some insights on the uh, Exonic Airstep uh, Spark Light uh, foot switch controller. It's really cool. You kind of have to experiment around with it because uh, unfortunately the instructions, the, the manual basically didn't explain much of anything of how you can do all the possibilities. But, you know, uh, like they say, a um, little experimentation. What, what is it? Uh, um, Necessity is the mother of invention, that old that old saying. So yeah, just get in there and experiment with it. It's actually really cool, uh, priced very reasonably. Uh, I'm not going to get into the pricing and all of that because they don't, you know, they're not paying me to promote their product. I paid for it, so I'm promoting it because I like it. Um, so, but yeah, it's easy to find. You just go on to Exonic, you look at their uh, look at their website. Uh, also, I th I think. Uh, uh, the big vendor, online vendor that starts with an A and ends with a, an N. <laughs> I'm not going to say their name because they're not paying me either. Yeah, you can order it from them as well. So yeah, it's, it's actually not bad. Uh, like I said, I am going to get the Positive Grid Spark 40 official model from the company. And I'm going to try that out at some point just to compare and see what the differences are and see 
if maybe they've listened to the feedback from uh, players and maybe they've, um, you know, resolved some of those issues. I don't know because I, I don't have it. But when I get it, I will uh, demonstrate it and I'll post it for you guys. Yeah, so anyway, Ron Lydian here going out. Um, please like, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, please hit the notification bell so you can be notified anytime I post new content. And also, uh, I have other stuff up at Instagram. So if you want to go over to Instagram and check out uh, a lot of cover stuff, jamming, just, you know, playing, a lot, lot more playing there than here. Um, so, yeah, check it out. You can find me over there at Instagram, Ron Lydian too. So, anyway, yeah, Ron Lydian. And we're going out with... The demo riff. <laughs> Thank you.